It's easy to see why cheating is so irresistible. Instead of getting crushed by the competition, cheats give you a sharpshooter's aim and the ability to see through walls like Superman. Some of the website offerings, you know, they have shopping carts, they have uh, pricing lists, you know, they have customer service. Selling cheats was the new thing of the underworld, with cheat developers making hundreds of millions and their criminal networks laundering their money for a percentage. It seemed like an easy and almost victimless crime that nobody seemed to care about. Or so they thought. Cheating has become an epidemic. The massive popularity of esports as competitive video gaming is known has made it fertile. Fertile ground, that is, for hacking. Some of these companies uh, rake in millions and millions of dollars in revenue each month. They're extremely professional. If you look at the scale, it's really unbelievable in some cases, and so are the profits. Since the early 2000s, cheaters and hackers have been ruining the online experiences for thousands of gamers, with mass character deletion hacks in games like World of Warcraft, where tens of thousands of characters were deleted in one instant or the god mode hack in the popular shooter, Counter-Strike. What the fuck? Bro, what? What the fuck, dude, what is this? It got so bad that in 2014, Hovik KQLY Tovmasian and a few other Counter-Strike professionals got caught cheating and kickstarted a massive controversy in the entire esports industry. Several professional CSGO players have been banned for cheating. The bans come just ahead of the DreamHack Winter Gaming Festival, where the banned players were scheduled to compete in the CSGO Championship for a $250,000 prize pool. This destroyed the credibility of the Counter-Strike eSports scene. And because it was one of the biggest competitive scenes at the time, sponsors became worried and began to pull out of the eSports industry resulting in thousands of dollars in losses for gaming organizations and companies. And they weren't wrong. Hackers began to pop up in every popular game, from Dota 2 to Counter-Strike and even League of Legends. And to make it even worse, companies such as League Sharp didn't hesitate to jump on this cheating hype train and started selling cheats to the public, making millions of dollars in the process. Now, what did gaming companies do about this? To be honest, they didn't do much about it. Not because they didn't want to, but because they just couldn't do anything about it. Every time they found a way to stop a cheat, another 10 cheats surfaced, creating an endless cycle of patching cheats. However, one company had had enough of this. Tencent, the Chinese tech giant and biggest gaming company in the world, decided to put an end to their cheating problems. In 2016, they began to infiltrate the underground cheating scene, gathering information about the biggest cheat providers and hack marketplaces. And, as you might think, they wanted to take down every single one of them. Tencent's efforts eventually resulted in League Sharp, the biggest cheating organization at the time, being completely exposed and sued into oblivion. They would serve as an example, with the organization being successfully sued for over $10 million in 2017. This marked the first victory for Tencent and the esports scene in general. But contrary to what everyone expected, Hundreds of new cheat marketplaces popped up to try and take League Sharp's place as the next big cheating platform. We could say that Tencent's plan actually backfired. However, the Chinese giant wasn't going to stop their war against cheaters. No, in fact, they actually decided to double down on their efforts. But this time, they would go a step further and decided to ask the Chinese government for direct help with their problem. After months of meetings and discussions, Tencent officially started its cooperation with the Chinese National Police in 2018. In the following months, hundreds of cheat developers were arrested and the purge seemed in full swing. But this also meant that the remaining developers went underground and became completely anonymous. 
at least for some time. In early 2020, Tencent was alerted about a relatively new group known as Cheat Ninja, a new cheating marketplace that was quickly becoming one of the most popular cheat websites due to the quality and variety of their hacks. At the same time, the Chinese Ministry of Public Security would start the Net Network 2020 Special Operation. This would be the biggest ever anti-cybercrime operation in the history of China. In the next few months, China's biggest tech companies, such as Tencent, Alibaba, Huawei, and a few more began to work with the Chinese police with tremendous success. Dozens of the most popular cybercrime websites, forums, and hack-related apps disappeared from the web in a matter of weeks. It seemed like another cheating purge. However, this time, every cybercriminal was in the government's crosshairs. This created a massive hacker exodus from China to India. However, Cheat Ninja didn't leave. They were making more money than ever and were not going to stop anytime soon. They were now known as the biggest cheating platform on the web, cashing in anywhere from $10,000 to $80,000 every day and feeling untouchable. But they were completely wrong. In April of 2020, one of their cheat resellers was surprised when police suddenly raided his home, arresting him and his colleague and seizing a ton of sensitive data linked to Cheat Ninja and its higher-ups. It turned out that the organization was comprised of three different groups. Auto Skills, specialized in mobile hacking, Sharpshooter, one of the most famous cheat developers that laid the foundation for mobile game cheating, and lastly, GM SPAC, a team of marketers and salesmen that had just compromised the entire operation. Due to the data found in the reseller's home, the police managed to identify dozens of other resellers and even a few of the leading GM SPAC members. Cheat Ninja was now in serious trouble. But because of their greed, they still didn't stop selling their cheats, and in fact, released a bunch of new cheats as if nothing had happened. As you might think, this was a massive mistake. The Chinese police were slowly making progress, and after months of interrogating the arrested suspects and going through their data, they discovered the person who was probably in charge of the entire cheating ring. All of the information pointed to a man located in Changsha, Hunan, called Wang Momo. The police raided his home on the 12th of January, capturing Wang in his sleep and seizing luxury cars, including a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, a McLaren, and a few more. However, the most valuable thing they found was the information about the cheating organization. It turned out that Wang was not the leader as was previously thought. In fact, he didn't even know the leader. He was, however, in charge of the GM SPAC team and the financial aspects of it. Even though the police arrested a critical member of the cheating organization, they had unknowingly made a giant mistake. Upon analyzing the data in Wang's home, they realized that Wong would pay his team members every 10 days, with the latest payment being made the day before the arrest. This meant that if the police didn't identify and capture the other members in nine days, they would all know that Wong had been compromised and would probably disappear into the shadows once again. Chinese authorities were now operating at full speed. Every hour without new information was a failure, and getting the missing organization leaders closer to freedom. From January 12th to 17th, they would arrest dozens of resellers and technicians linked to Wong. However, the identity of the other leaders was still a mystery, and the police were slowly running out of time. But then, on January 18th, three days before the payment date, the police made a massive breakthrough. After raiding one of Wong's data centers, 
they discovered that a mysterious person known as Lee was in charge of organizing the entire operation. And, interestingly enough, Lee was connected to a family member of Wong, known as He, who was residing in a basic apartment in Tianjin. The police on the case immediately took a plane and traveled to Tianjin to arrest the suspect. They arrived in the middle of the night on the 19th, but to their surprise, the local police initially blocked their actions. With time running out and less than 48 hours left until the next payment, the pressure kept rising. The task force was finally cleared to make the arrest on the 20th of January, and with only a few hours left to the payment deadline, the police finally arrested He in his home. In an unexpected turn of events, it was revealed that He was actually the same person as Lee, which meant that Wong had previously lied to the police to protect his family member. While searching He's home, they found cryptocurrencies worth over $4 million, papers that indicated that he was the owner of several unlicensed cars, and that he owned a few real estate properties through fake credentials. After capturing Wong, the organizer of GM SPACs and dozens of his resellers, they now also managed to arrest the organizer of the entire operation. However, the payment deadline was reached only a few hours after his arrest. And because nobody got paid, the remaining members began to panic as they realized that something bad had happened. Only a few days later, on the 24th of January, Cheat Ninja sent their last ever message to their customers, telling them that they would immediately cease to provide more cheats and any support for existing software. Since then, the website has been shut down and the remaining members, which are mostly the hackers that had created the cheats, have disappeared from the face of the earth. In total, Cheat Ninja made somewhere from 77 to 115 million US dollars in cryptocurrency by selling subscription packages for their cheats. These ranged from $20 to $200 per month and were available for every popular game, including Call of Duty, PUBG, Fortnite, and many others. Even though the cheat creators are still out there, the operation was a major victory for the gaming industry. But only a few months after Cheat Ninja was dismantled, the industry would be faced with an even bigger problem. Something so big that it could destroy the entire video game industry forever. Click here and discover the biggest threat to video games the industry has ever seen. Video narrated by Eric Peabody.